folks it's me denny i'm back for another episode of dad season show this is episode seven believe it or not seven episodes in i hope you caught last week's episode with pete overzet uh whose blog uh, the p.o box is a must read i think for dads and moms alike i have a guest here by the way his name is his name is ziggy i hope the folks i hope the folks can see him he's a good boy you're a good boy. Yeah, bad boy. And um, yeah, so hope you uh, found last week's show uh, helpful, hopeful, all those things. And I'm hoping to, uh, I'm hoping to have more folks on uh, in the future, including my Living the Stream co-host JJ Zacharyson, including my long, long time industry friend uh, Rich Rebar. I'm sorry for the background noise. If you can hear that, it'll be over in a minute. I promise. There's uh there's there's cleaning going on right above me, and uh, we're hoping uh, we're hoping that ends uh, sooner rather than later. Um, a little mi mis timing, folks. So anyway, uh, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, kids' exposure uh, to online to social media because. It, well, it's something that the, the the folks have asked about, and and I have been interested in you know looking into very strongly, very powerfully, as we say on the Road of World Football Show with Pat Doherty. And the more I look into it, the uh, more disturbing it, it is. And I I don't want it to be that way, honestly. I I want it. I wanted to find that like. Like some social media exposure is fine for for kids. It turns out it's not at all. It's actually quite bad. I wanted to start the show here uh, with with a little presentation. Um, yes, I think I can do this. Hold on. Uh, da, 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 da. We're going with. Oh, no, there we go. Okay. Hey, look, I can share it. I just shared it, folks. Look. Uh, so for those listening on Spotify, uh, I'm I'm looking at a, uh, we're looking at a graph on self-reported disabilities among U.S. college freshmen. And uh, wow, you can see that everything has stayed pretty much stable from 2010 to 2018. Uh, except for uh, psychiatric disorders, and uh, I, I do, I do think that this kind of shows what we're talking about, what we're going to talk about in this show, because in 2010 is when people became chronically, dangerously online. Because then, now at, in 2010, uh, you know, more and more people, including myself, I think, it, I think in 2010 is when I first, when I got my first smartphone maybe 2009, uh, were able to put the internet in their pocket and were able to connect all the time to everything. I'm pretty sure that's about when my Twitter addiction started. So that, that actually does check out. And so from 2010 to 2018, now this is six years, this data is six years old. So it, it's actually kind of outdated at this point. But um, we see that you know, ADHD, physical disabilities, and learning disabilities stayed relatively, uh, relatively normal here um, on the chart that I'm presenting. Psych uh, psychiatric disorders uh, spiked, spiked uh, over that those eight years. And really, I mean, come on, let's be honest about what this is. It's it's the phone. It's phones. I mean, <laughs> let's let's just be real. Um, so th this is what I want to talk about today. Uh, I'm going to try to stop sharing this. There we go. I'm back. So is Ziggy. He's a good boy. He has a snaggle tooth. Hi, Ziggy. Um, so, folks, thanks for joining me again. This is Dad Season Show. Uh, for folks joining on YouTube. Matt Blair wants to know, when will we get to the meat of the show? And I told you, Matt, that I would not talk about the meat of the show anymore. I talked about it too much last time. I don't want to talk about the meat of the show. We're calling it 
folks, we're rebranding the meat of the show. We're rebranding it the heart of the show. I feel like that's uh, less uncomfortable, right? Someone would say more comfortable, more comfortable to say the heart of the show rather than to con- for me to constantly say, now to the meat of the show. We got to get to the meat. The meat. It's just I just got to stop. I sound like an Arby's commercial. Nothing is more, um, nothing is more dystopian uh, or nihilistic than an Arby's commercial. I mean, they they really do have it down pat. Like someone was like, "How can we make the ultimate commercial ad camp or ad campaign for 21st century dystopia?" And they said, "I got it. We have the meat." Dun 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 dun. Yeah, you heard me, Ziggy. You heard me. So yeah, uh, uh, love, love, and Arby's dystopia uh, commercial, and we will not be getting to the meat of the show ever. Hey, Bob Harris, Bob Harris is in the chat. Bob Harris, my my fantasy football hero from a long time back. And Bob says I'm not actually a dad. He's here for the meat. And you know what? Uh, because Bob is asking for the meat of the show, I'll say the meat of the show. Just for Bob. I know I said I, I just said I'm not gonna say it. I'm gonna say it for Bob. Bob was extremely nice and it still is today, obviously, but was extremely nice and welcoming to me when I was new in the fantasy football industry. Really helped me. So we always we love we love Bob, don't we, folks? Sal, Sal's in the chat. YouTube is horrible for kids, in my opinion. Uh yeah, it is. Uh it like there's sicko posts. Yeah, sickos post weird stuff under the guise of kids programming. Yeah, man. Some of the stuff my kids watch, I don't, I don't like. I don't like it. Um, I know, look, I I know we 90s kids grew up uh, you know, logged on to an extent. I mean, I I did, you know, AOL chat, whatever that was called, pretty much every day when I got home from school, you know. I um I would go on various you know there were there were like five websites on the internet and I would go on a lot of them and check things out and and I saw things that I probably shouldn't have seen okay uh so I, I, I there it's not like I grew up free of internet I didn't okay not 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 at all uh I also saw stuff on TV that I shouldn't have seen all right I mean uh uh HBO uh, as as folks used to call it in the 90s, Hell's Box Office uh, was a treasure trove of things kids should not see back in the 1990s. And boy, did I watch a lot of HBO for whatever reason. So I'm not I'm not speaking from the vantage point of oh, I had a pure, perfect childhood. And my kid has been poisoned by media. No, I've also been poisoned by media and, you know, so have you, by the way. Um, so that, that is the, the vantage point I'm coming from. I know I'm all over the place to start this. I'm a little, I'm a little frazzled, honestly, to be, to be very upfront with you. I am frazzled. I have a lot of things going on right now. I was late, as you may know, to start the show today. So I'm trying to get it together here. I do want to tell the folks that uh i launched the dad season show patreon page which i'll I'll, i will put that link in the uh in the chat for folks who want to check it out um look i know i know everybody has a patreon now and i know you are just stretched to your absolute limits in supporting so-called content creators who you enjoy and who you want to support and i know one more person saying hey i have a patreon is not what you want to hear. So I get that. I get it. Okay. Uh, I am going to post some free stuff on there. I do have uh, like an eight minute podcast uh, on the Patreon right now about my, my son telling me to be the man of the house recently. uh, And my reaction to that. So check that out. That's freely available. Um, I'm hoping to create a community because I've, I've gotten, a, uh, over the past six, seven weeks, I've gotten a lot of private messages, uh, saying, Hey, I really like the show because 
it doesn't make me feel so alone. And that a that makes me feel really good. And B, that's kind of what I was going for when I started the dad season show back in February. I I wanted to create a kind of a space, whatever I, people use over you space too much, but we'll call it that. We'll call it a space where parents, not just dads, obviously, because we have some moms in the chat sometimes. But parents could get together and not feel so alone because, man, there are times as a, a dad where you you feel completely isolated, you alienated from 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 everybody, and you and you wonder, hey, uh, what is it exactly I'm doing wrong? And does anybody else have these problems, or is it is it just me? Am I uniquely bad as a parent? Like that's a question I've asked myself many times, many times. I still, I still ask. Okay. And no, I'm not. I'm no expert, and I'm, I'm, I, I'm failing every day. I'm failing every day. I stooped to my kids' level yes, just yesterday. Okay, I was not the bigger person in the room just yesterday on Sunday. Okay, on the way home from a lacrosse game. It happens. It happens. I, I'm trying. You're trying. Everybody's trying, but we do feel alone. And I'm hoping that the, the the Patreon, more so than the YouTube or whatever, I'm hoping the Patreon can, you know, we can create a group of people who can talk about topics. I'm going to post, I'm going to post, you know, uh, uh, various topics that come up in the news or in my life. I encourage folks to do the same. I'm going to give permissions for people to post their own uh, thoughts and 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 topic ideas, so that we can chat together. And not necessarily to figure it out, okay? Like, like that. That's that's the thing. I think that that's, you know, parenting podcasts and streams and stuff. I feel like the the goal of figuring it all out. Like we can be we can be the perfect parents if we just try to be perfect. I, I that that to me rings hollow. I don't think that that should be the goal. Is what I'm saying. It's a nice selling point, you know. Like, hey, do you want to be a perfect parent? listen to my podcast. Yeah. Okay. I'll, that, I mean, amazing. I'll do that. Uh, sorry, Ziggy's scratching at the door. Ziggy, no, you bad boy. Stop. Um, but, but yes, but I want to create a community, uh, on, on the, the very, my various platforms, whatever that, that we're doing the dad season show on. And I, I hope that folks can jump in the Patreon. And again, I know it's annoying when people are like, I got a Patreon. Uh, but so it goes. So it goes in the 21st century with people creating content for money and uh, and then asking you to uh, to support. We're going to call it support because that's a nice word. So thank you. Thank you for those who you know do support. will support the show uh, trying to trying to grow a community here. I, and honestly, in the chat, we have a really good community. I see the same the same people. Every week, pretty much jumping in, having great comments, uh, critiques of what I'm saying. I mean, I, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, out of your ability to be self-reflective, to, like I said, like, see, hear what I have to say and say, wait, well, well, but what about this? But what about that? To say, no, that you don't know it all because I don't know it all. You know, I don't. I, that's not the selling point of this show. The selling point is not, I know it all, and I will make you the terminator of parents. Perfect in every way. An unstoppable machine of good parenting. No. I promise you won't be that ever. But you can you can try. Oh, folks. Okay. So we are here to talk about social media and children. And so my kids are 11 and 7, just so you know. Just for context purposes. And I do have some, some background in, you know, technology, uh, you know, ch like children-based technology, okay? Technology for kids, some would say. Because uh, for years and years, sorry, for years and years, I worked at a, uh, a, an education technology publication. That was my full-time job. On the side, I wrote a lot of fantasy football stuff. I sometimes wrote for the New York Times. I did other stuff, but uh, 
for my main job, I wrote about ed tech. That's what that's what it's called, ed tech. And uh, man, these the ed tech companies. Here's what they want you to believe: that your kids they gotta have it, baby. They gotta have that ed tech. They gotta have a laptop in front of them all at all hours of the day. That they're at a huge disadvantage if they don't have access to every conceivable piece of technology that a school can provide. And, you know, research that I've seen over the past 48 hours as I prepared for the show, but also research that I remember looking at back then as a, as a reporter writing about how technology is being used in American schools and, and, and colleges. It, it was non-conclusive to, to be, to be, you know, very fair. It was unconclusive uh, to be detrimentally to, 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 uh, to be critical. No, it was, it was, there is nothing that says, uh, that kids have to have technology at their disposal. The New York times back in all the way back in 2012 wrote a piece about, uh, and I remember this because I was like, wait a second, wait a dang second here. Wrote, New York times wrote a piece about Basically, every major Silicon Silicon Valley, I can't say Silicon all of a sudden, every Silicon Valley executive sent their kids to a school in the Valley that doesn't use computers. I don't mean that this school only uses some computers and has limited technology. I mean, zero computers like like pilgrim level technology and and i and i saw this i remember reading this this is back when my kid was was a baby my first kid was a baby and i thought well that's that's something that's something that probably should ring some alarms there is that like every google executive is like i definitely don't want my kids accessing technology it's really bad uh all right that's uh I mean, I, I've never forgotten that. And I look back to that New York Times piece from, from all those years back, and it has this line in it. Some education experts say that the push to equip classrooms with computers is unwarranted because studies do not clearly show that this leads to better test scores or other measurable gains. Uh, yeah, I mean, that that's what I remember covering the ed tech space back in, you know, from like 20... 2008 to 2012 was that nothing was conclusive about whether these whether these technologies were helping children it was sold as if as if the the science had been settled but that was not that was not the case so they asked one google executive who sends his kids to the pilgrim school with no technology they said you know Aren't you afraid that your children are going to be at a huge disadvantage later in life when they're not familiar with the various kinds of technologies that that other kids are learning in public schools? Now, of course, this was a, a very expensive, very posh private school, so not accessible to to everyone slash inaccessible to almost no one. So it goes. And so this this. Uh, this Google executive answered that question with this quote. He said, it's super easy. It's like learning to use toothpaste at Google and all these places. We make te technology as brain dead easy to use as possible. There's no reason why kids can't figure it out when they get older. They make it as brain dead easy as possible. What a quote. And yeah, yeah. It is incredibly easy to use Google. It is intuitive to use YouTube. There's nothing complicated about it. Nothing. I, I think my my kids, and you, I'm sure you all have um, stories of, uh, like this too. I remember, you know, my kids would pick up our iPad when they were like, I don't know, 18 months. And just be able, like they would, know how to scroll what what is what, what is more disturbing or disorienting 
than seeing a baby basically swipe on a phone or a tablet. I mean that that to, to me that's a that's a horror show. And my kid, my both of my kids did it. They just take they they pick up your phone, they pick up your tablet, and they know what they they know that they know the app that they want, and they swipe until they find the app, and they hit the app, and then they know what to do. I remember having coworkers back before I had kids, and they would they would say this stuff. Hey, my kid knows how to use an iPad. Oh, oh, oh right, okay. Because your kid's Einstein, obviously. Right, sure, sure. I'm sure he, yes, you have the only kid in the United States able to use an iPad at two years old. It turns out they were, they were right. They were right. Every little baby can use an iPad, can use a tablet, can use a phone, whatever. And they can use it easily and intuitively. And that's, that's horrific because like the Google executive just said, they make it as brain dead easy as possible to use. There's no, there are no barriers to getting hooked on this stuff. None. It's why all of our uh, boomer parents are hooked on it because there was no, there, you know, there was no uh, barrier to entry. They, they, they understood, Hey, I, I click the Facebook app and it opens and I click this button to share some horrific meme from my high school buddy or, you know, my, my coworker and, and boom, and boom, and I get engagement and I get a little dopamine hit. And again, and again, and again, and I go back to the app and back to the app and back to that. So, you know, it, it, it happens, it happens for everybody it happens for folks who didn't grow up with this stuff, meaning our parents, it, 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 uh, it happens for kids who have never known a reality without constant access, uh, to technology. But I do, I do think when, when you're, when you're, when you're considering, um, limitations on your kids uh internet usage and access I, I think in the back of your mind you should try to remember that silicon valley folks are not letting their kids use the technology that they're making because they know and and i know i sound i'm i'm, I'm on the verge of sounding like a conspiratorial madman okay I understand what I sound like at the moment. And I'm really trying not to get all the way there. But they but they they know the effects. They understand the effects on kids of this sort of technology. And we don't, I guess. We can know the there is research out there. I'm going to talk about that in a few moments. But just just remember that. Remember remember that little fact. Uh, David, David Philippi back in the uh, chat says dad season for anyone who cares about the next generation of humanity. Yes, it, that's exactly, that's exactly it. Sorry. I'm, my phone is exploding at the moment. Troy Olson's in the chat. Yo, hello. Uh, <laughs> Darren says, let Ziggy back on the pod. You can't silence, silence him. Uh, he is silenced. He is napping now. Um, uh, Matthew, Matthew, uh, in the chat says, uh, says my outfit, Denny's outfit has hundred percent been to Pearl Jam concert and is dad season approved. Oh yeah. Flannel. Um, uh, I have a talking head shirt. This, uh, look, this is the dad season uniform. I, I think that we should all be wearing exactly what I'm wearing. That's just my, uh, my opinion. Neil Dutton in the chat. Uh, Brain Dead Easy was the name of my Grateful Dead tribute band. We all remember that, Neil, from the 80s. Darren in the chat says, um, but Baby Boomer still confused Facebook status status bar with Google search bar. <laughs> and yes, that is that is uh, correct. So uh, here's, here's something I'm going to share with folks. Uh, social media and mental health experts have been keeping a massive Google document uh, for at least the past five years, maybe longer, uh, outlining and linking to every significant piece of research related uh, to internet usage among young people. 
Okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to put that in the chat right now. Now this is, this is actually freely available. It's a Google doc publicly accessible. I've been on it a lot over the past two days trying to prep for, for this show. Um, I, I, I recommend that you, you all check it out uh, because, you know, look, there's a lot of scientific talk in there that I don't quite understand. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to pretend that I perused everything and said, Oh yes, yeah, so I understand everything here. No, I, there was stuff I was like, I, I don't, I've never seen that word. I don't, I don't know what that means. This is incredibly complex and uh, difficult. Um, but it, it does, it does have a lot in there. I, I pulled a, a, a couple things from the findings in the, in that, you know, trove of research. And one thing that jumped out to me was the research on FOMO among teenagers. Um, and FOMO, by the way, FOMO is fear of missing out. Uh, for those who, who who don't know somehow. And I I can relate to that because the the element for s social media, uh, I, I would say the, the the one with the most pull for me is is the never ending, what I would call the never ending party. Uh, now this this can 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 vary from uh, person to person, depending on on the size of your account and what you're using it for. Um, I will say that once you cross a, a, a certain threshold of followers on Twitter, now known as X, um, the party never stops. Your mentions are constantly being filled with people, you know, asking for your interactions, uh, telling you how terrible you are, or how good you are. Either way, it's a dopamine hit, okay? And so the party rages on and on no matter what is happening in the world. And it really ramps up for me. It really ramps up in football season. And it really ramps up on Sundays and Thursdays and Mondays and every other day that there's a football game. Soon there will be a football game on every day, I'm sure. So, uh, the idea when I'm when I'm sitting there and I get bored, even for a moment, even for a moment, I'm reading a book and I'm in, I'm in a part of a book that has hasn't quite captured me. Okay, and I'm a little bored and I say, well, you know what? There's a party. There's a party in my pocket. It's not it, it's not as inappropriate as it sounds. What I'm saying is that there's a party on my phone. And it's and it's begging me to enter. It's be, it's be, I'm one I'm one click away. The party says, "Jump in here, get in this party. Social interaction up to your eyeballs. You'll never you'll never be without social interaction." It's like it's like a bunch of people in a ballroom. I've had I've had a dream. I I'll be I'm going to be very upfront with you with you all. I've had I've had dreams. I would say reoccurring dream where. I enter a ballroom full of people I don't know, but I, but they know me. And this ballroom is magnificent. It looks like the thing from, uh, from The Shining. It looks like the room from The Shining, right? Like this unbelievably cool bar and people dancing and having a good time. There's, there's music playing. People are dressed really nicely. And, uh, and I and I come in in the dream. I come into this ballroom, and I, uh, it's 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 amazing. You know, everybody wants me there. And I wake up from this, and I think, oh God, that uh, that's not good. That's not good. And that and and that you know distills. I think how like how I think of social media as the party that never stops and the party that wants me that wants me in there. And it's hard to say no, especially when you get to a certain point in, in your life where, you know, get togethers with, with friends, with buddies, with whatever are few and far between, you know, uh, we, we talked a couple of weeks ago on the dad season show about making time for those real life in-person social interactions. So check that out if, if, if you, if you like, but yeah, so, so when you, when you don't have the sort of social interaction that you used to have before kids. Social media can suffice quite nicely. 
and it, and it, and it hooks you in. So the FOMO, the FOMO part, uh, uh, certainly resonated with me. Now we're talking about young people. We're talking about preteens and teenagers. And, uh, this research was done in 2021, um, on, the sense of FOMO that young people feel while using, uh, or, or I guess while not using social media. Uh, here's what the, the research said. Parent and adolescent reports of the number of adolescents' social media accounts were moderately correlated with parent-reported uh, DSM-5 symptoms of inattention, hyperactivity, impulsivity, anxiety, and depressive symptoms as well as adolescent reported fear of missing out and loneliness. Lastly, anxiety and depressive symptoms were highest among adolescents with a relatively high number of parent reported social media accounts and relatively high FOMO. So the FOMO is hardening for these kids, is hardening into depression. Because what what really feels worse than missing out, especially at that age? You're missing out on the fun. You're missing out on on social interaction. For, for some kids, climbing the social ladder matters a lot. I know it mattered to me a lot. And, you know, so you're, you're, if you're missing out on that online, if you're if if you are constantly on various various apps as a kid and and you and you know what you're missing i and i i would i would say that you know i'd paraphrase you know what you're quote missing then you you yeah certainly you become sad you become depressed you feel lonely isolated and this is this is the this is the point by the way this is the point of social media the point of social media apps is to make you feel sad and lonely and make you dependent on coming back again and again and again. And it never makes you feel better. It never makes you feel better. I spend a lot of time online as, as folks know, and I've made jokes about it, but it's not really a joke. It's not. I will say that after a, a long day of being online for my job, or not for my job. Uh, I feel disoriented. I feel like I'm half half there, but half not there. Uh, my foot is in my you know one foot is in the current moment, but the other foot is certainly not. It's some it's somewhere else. This stuff makes you constantly be elsewhere. You're thinking about what's elsewhere. You're thinking, what am I missing? The FOMO. That's the FOMO talking. Sure, my kid's showing me a drawing that they made in school. And sure, my spouse is talking to me about tomorrow's plans. But I am thinking about what, what else is happening. And that that's that's a that's an awful feeling. And it makes you feel it makes you feel disoriented. And they, I mean, I I don't know if folks agree with me or if you've ever felt disoriented from, from social media, but you just, yeah, I just feel like in a haze. That That's how I describe it, in a haze. Um, so I hate it. <laughs> I hate it pretty much. And I, I, I don't know exactly what to do about it for myself, but I think I can help my kids avoid that sort of disorientation uh, as they grow up and as they as they're going to want to use social media. I mean, my, my my daughter, she's seven. She has a little fake phone. It's not connected at all. It's a fake Minnie Mouse phone. And I see her when she plays in our playroom. She will snap selfies. She'll do. She'll do that thing. She'll she'll do the the duck face selfie and send it to her friends on her fake phone. And so it, it is it is like an impulse that they have because that, that's what they see. That's what they see in popular media. That's what they see among teenagers. 
uh, maybe their cousins, maybe their their maybe kids at school, and they want to emulate that because hey, that's cool. It's cool. The same way that smoking cigarettes is cool. And there's no two ways about it. Okay? Please don't tell my kids, but smoking cigarettes is cool. I'm sorry. I don't... I take no pleasure in reporting that. But any, anyone who smokes is instantly cooler than not smoking. Than when they're not smoking. That's that's just a fact. It's just a fact. And so when you when you see someone you know, chronically online, maybe with a huge following and they're constantly looking perfect and they're constantly saying the right things and they're constantly getting so much engagement that it makes you sick with jealousy. You want to be like them. I'm sure as, as a kid, as an adult, that's true. I, I'm sure as a kid, it's it's doubly true, if that's the thing. Uh, some other uh, issues that the uh, the Google Doc that I I linked to uh, mentioned were were body issues among boys and girls. Uh, one conclusion went like this: as hypothesized, social media use and thin and muscular ideal internalization. So basically, telling kids that skinny and muscular is good were positively correlated with body dissatisfaction in both genders. In moderation analyses, thin ideal internalization, again, skinny is good, emerged as the only variable that had a significant effect on body dissatisfaction in both genders. Additionally, the influence of social media use on body dissatisfaction was moderated by muscular ideal internalization in boys, so big muscles are good for boys, whereby for boys with high muscular ideal internalization, greater social media use was associated with greater body dissatisfaction. That's a really academic way to say that the more, in this case, in, in this study, the more boys were logged on and being bombarded by pictures of young guys and, and middle-aged guys and older men with unbelievably perfect bodies according to some standard okay being being bombarded with those images and then looking at yourself it feels awful and I, hey listen the the kids are not alone here if you're an adult uh, you know I'm gonna speak for for the guys here if you're an adult dude and you're logged on and 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 every third scroll you're getting some sort of picture of a 60 year old man with with six pack abs and 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 pecs out to here and a perfect jawline you you, you feel like that makes you feel like shit about yourself you know, that, that, that old man that old man looks like that and i look like this you know it's harmful it's harmful man mm. to think that to, to feel like you have to live up to that impossible standard. And by the way, no one looks like that. No one looks like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, that, that's all. It's all fake. When one way or another, that's all fake. I try to remember that when I feel bad about myself. Uh, but yeah, so so if you're, you know, a, a teenage a teenage boy and you're and you're still maturing, your mind is not fully matured yet. And you're seeing these images, you're, they're just pummeling you day after day after day on your social feeds. You're going to feel terrible about the way you look. Obviously, the same goes for girls. Someone mentioned um, Snapchat in the, in, in the uh, Dad Season chat here. And I'm really sorry. Um, I can't find it. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, dad's look, uh, Snapchat is, is is horrific, horrific. It makes you look perfect. I I remember my my kids using it in a restaurant one time. It, they were using their uncle's or aunt's phone, and they were like, "Dad, hey, lean in, get into the Snapchat." And they took a picture of me. I forget it was something goofy, but I'll be honest with you, I looked amazing. I, I looked I looked like I was 20 years old. 
no blemishes whatsoever. I looked unbelievable. And, and I thought, oh my God, wait, is that what this app does? This app makes you look perfect? How can any how can anyone see themselves perfect on the phone and then look at themselves in the mirror? That's 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 not that's not okay. That's not right. But kids do this all the time. Oh man, the warp the warping of the brain must be so intense at that point. We have a, a commenter here, uh, Stepfathers Fantasy Football. Uh, ironically, FOMO is probably a good thing. Okay, uh, not fear, uh, not fear of not being at a five hundred dollar music festival or driving an expensive car, but fear of not living a real life while doom scrolling all day. I, I yeah, I can see that, but the but reality doesn't have the same sort of like dopamine based pull as the non-reality of online of the internet. Right. And so I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you sell that as something to have FOMO about. To be like, Oh, Hey, I, I live a peaceful, a relatively peaceful, even keel life where I'm not experiencing a lot of pangs of anxiety or depressive symptoms. Come join me. You know, it's that versus click the button and get blasted with dopamine and feel good. Feel good for a moment. Feel good for a few moments and then feel real bad. So I don't I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm skeptical on that one. Uh, Sal says uh, they FOMO uh, of posting about it. Right. Right. Exactly. Cooter Doodles in the chat. She says something about smoking. Oh, she says, uh, counterpoint, if we were logged off and in, and in the moment at all times, we wouldn't be well-versed in wide receiver tweets. Yeah, that, that's true. That's true. My wide receiver tweet would have never existed. My life's work, written millions of words, and my life's work is the enemy speaks kindly and holds a knife. Oh, well, what what can you do Is is the uh, is the question there. Before we get to the end of the show here, uh, I'm going to wrap it up with some some various thoughts on on the kids being online. Um, I, I wanted to mention again uh, for folks who didn't tune into the beginning of the show that uh, there's a dad season show Patreon. If folks would like to support that, um, I'll post weekly hashtag content there, including short podcasts, uh, articles, and uh, discussion topics. Uh, for us to talk about, I'm hoping that it can become something of a community for uh, for people looking to connect with uh, with other parents and just talk talk about like the challenges that they that they face. Because, like I said at the beginning of the show, it feels lonely as hell sometimes to be a, a parent. Even if even if you have a partner, even if you have a husband, a wife, that can still feel lonely because you're as a dad. I know I've had thought like. Am I am I the worst dad ever? Or like maybe like bottom, like the bot bottom like one percentile of dads? But I can't ask my wife that. She'll say, no, no, you're fine. I mean, sometimes she would say that. Other times she would say, no, you probably are. You're probably bot bottom 0.25 percentile. Uh so anyway, join join the Patreon uh if you want to uh jump in there. And uh we can uh we can create a hashtag community all right folks uh we have uh neil dutton in the chat it says uh, my youngest is addicted to making weird videos that she posts on uh on this here website uh quote but i don't read the comments because real people are terrible she's eight yeah that's uh i i can't imagine i mean my son has wanted to make a, a pokemon youtube channel <laughs> And I've had to say no over and over and over again. And uh, he still he still wants to because I, th I, th I think, you know, he wants to engage with people about something he's passionate about, which is Pokemon cards uh, and all things Pokemon. So I, I do encourage that. And what I've I've tried to replace that with 
finding places for him to go uh, do like Pokemon battles or tournaments or whatever they do. I don't really know how Pokemon works, but I found places where we can actually go in real life where he can engage and trade cards and battle with people again in real life rather than starting a YouTube channel and doing it there. Uh, but that, but that is, you know, that is a, a, a motivating factor for a lot of kids to get online and stay online is to engage in their passions. I, if, if, if I were 12 years old today, I'd be doing that. I'd be doing that with, with the NFL for sure. I'd be doing it with fantasy football. Like I, I need to, I need to engage with people on the internet about this, this thing that I'm obsessed with. Uh, so I, I do understand the inclination, but it is, it is really, uh, it's a, it's problematic in that, you know, you, you don't want your kid going down that, that rabbit hole. Uh, we have, uh, another one from, uh, another comment from stepfather's fantasy football. He said, uh, have you heard about, uh, looks maxing? No. <laughs> Relevant to this topic and very depressing, but the natural evolution of unrealistic beauty standards driven by social media. Yeah, I like when you when you see um, pictures of people on Instagram, that's that's just not how humans look in real life. It's just not. There's something deeply unnatural and and uh, and unsettling uh, about the way that people present themselves on a picture based platform. And and I look, I'm. I'm guilty of it too, okay? I've used a filter or two before. Because everybody else on the site looks so damn good. You don't want you don't want to be the one who looks who, who looks real. You want to you want, you know, everybody's looking fake. Let's just look fake. But none of that's real. It's all fake. But but at, but children, we have to understand that children uh can't make that um you know, you can't discern. They, 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 they can't. They can't tell what is real and what is not real. I mean, sometimes we can't. We can't. So, oh, there we go. Uh, uh, Darren says uh, he's about to create an in real life Fortnite in my backyard for the for the kids, right? For the kids, Darren. Sure, you're not going to do that at all. Um, uh, right. I mean, yeah. So even yeah, video. You know, gaming is like worlds different there's no pause button on gaming that this is this is something that i'm always like hey hey xavier just push pause push pause come here for a second dad there is no pause i'm online i'm playing with people like oh right 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 therefore you can never get off the game you're playing which is the point so i do hate that i hate video games i'm sorry sorry to the folks uh, one last thing I wanted to mention here was a 2021 study, again, on social media's impact on kids. The conclusion was detrimental associations between screen time and mental health uh, and mental well-being started when screen time exceeded one hour per day, whereas increases in physical activity levels were beneficially associated with well-being. And again, a nerdy way to say that kids kids who have over one hour of screen time per day are more likely uh, to have mental health issues. And there, there's no arguing that social media is behind the spike in mental health issues. This stuff is making, is driving us. Well, I want to watch, watch what I say here, but this stuff is making us unwell. Let's say that very unwell. And this is something I did not want to hear, by the way, uh, when uh, this this uh, 2021 study said uh, detrimental associations between screen time and mental well-being started when screen time exceeded one hour per one hour. Are you kidding me? I have to keep my kids screen time to under an hour a day. Do you know how difficult that is, especially like in the winter. Oh my God, an hour. I was hoping, I was hoping for a little, a little cushion researchers, three hours. You couldn't have, no, an hour. Damn. That is a, that's a heavy lift, man. That's a heavy lift because the screens are everywhere. 
my kid watches YouTube on our on our TV, on our main TV. He watches YouTube on my phone. Ugh. And and you want them to you want them to be happy. I, this is this is the perplexing part and the part that I don't really have an answer for. You want them to be happy. You want them to to, to connect with friends and my kids do connect with friends online like real like real friends like from school i'm not talking about strangers on the internet like real friends right and you 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 want that for them they like it they want it makes them feel good i guess in the moment but you also know you know we know the silicon valley folks who don't send their kids to schools with computers they know everybody knows that this is bad it's bad for kids to be on screens all the time. It just is. It just is. And I'm not I'm not one to say, you know, get your kid out there and ha have have them start running running laps around your neighborhood. You know, get them into weightlifting early. Like that's not that's not what I'm saying. But I do think shelving some screen time in favor of some sort of physical physical activity and it'll take look it'll take some time. You got to find out what your kid likes. On, on on a physical activity level maybe maybe they're just they're not into team sports my kids are not really in team sports but you got to keep trying we got to as parents we got to keep trying and get them in real life social situations that's that's how they grow they do not grow socially online that stunts them it's that, that's another thing on the research that i linked to in the chat it's the, that 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 is that is an incredibly detrimental thing for their social maturity. Sometimes when I'm driving, I I'm almost in awe of how many of my fellow drivers are looking at their phones while driving. I've noticed a, a decrease in speeding. I, this is anecdotal, but. When I'm out there, either on the highway or not on the highway, whatever, I've noticed a decrease in speeding because people are driving slowly because they're logged on. They literally have their phone in front of their faces as they're driving. And they are answering texts or something or just scrolling mindlessly while driving. I... I just, I feel like this is not fair. Like what, whatever Silicon Valley companies have done to us is not right. And it's not fair. And fighting against it is so hard because it, it has become so mainstreamed, so normalized. It's normal to be on your phone while driving. Let's just be honest about it. That's like a normal thing. Like I'm going to operate this you know, however much car weighs, 3,000 pound automobile while looking at Instagram, while looking at my email, while texting, all that shit. That's normal now. And it, it's wrong. It's, I, again, I do truly, truly hate it. Looking through the comments here. Uh, um, yeah, the stepfather's fantasy football back in the chat. Your conspiratorial, you conspiratorial madman, and your trepidation about every child on the planet getting wrecked by social media addiction, anxiety, and depression. I mean, yeah, I, I just, I feel like it's not even a conspiracy at this point. It's just that's just, it's happening. It's happening. So I, I will, I'm going to post about this on the Dad Season Show Patreon if folks would like to. Uh, jump in and share your thoughts or maybe the way that you handle social media and the internet with your with your children um, because I'm I don't have the answers I, I I really don't all I know is that this stuff is really bad for kids and as as parents as adults it sure feels like our responsibility to make sure that they're not like the commenter just said, completely wrecked by this stuff. It's something that no other generation of parents has had to deal with. 
you know, our, our parents would say, go outside, start watching TV, go outside. And you know what? Eventually TV got boring. Let's be honest. Like you would watch your show and then it would go to some, you know, adult talk show. It would go to Sally, Jesse, Raphael, it would go to Oprah, whatever. And, you know, you'd be uninterested and you would go play. But there, there is no end. There is no end to the entertainment online. It is constant and never ending on purpose. You, the kid will never get to a YouTube short where, the, where they, they will say, okay, now it's time for me to go do something else. Because there's always a YouTube short that tickles tickles the dopamine receptors right behind that and then right behind that and right behind that forever and ever and ever how do we, how do we fight against that how do we fight against the content machine and here i am making content i don't know it's a vexing thing but thank you for joining me today i appreciate it uh check out the dad season show patreon if you'd like to support the show um check out the research that i linked to in the chat i, I actually found it really helpful i think the folks can uh can look through that and, and maybe we can talk more about it uh uh we have one more uh comment here someone right now is cooking up a class action lawsuit against big tech for this i i i wouldn't doubt it i wouldn't doubt it it's it, it can't go on it can't go on like this right forever it just can't if it does um we're in trouble that's what i'll say thanks for joining uh i'll see you next monday at one o'clock for episode eight of dad season show until then